first great white egret nest on the Avalon Marshes back in 2012. And this year we have 48 active nests with approximately 51 chicks. At West Ham Moor, this year, we have more nests than ever. We have four nests. Uh, in previous years, we have had one there, occasionally two, but only one being successful. I believe the numbers are going up. As the population across the Avalon marshes increases, those birds are fledging and moving out into new territory, new areas. So this is increasing nest size. got one pretty large one and one medium sized one so we've popped them into here all the gear that we're using has been sanitized using environmentally friendly sanitizer in our hands as well so what we're doing is putting what we call a metal ring which is the BTO's British Trust for Ornithologists ring, uh, which has a unique number on it. So, at some time in the future, uh, if it is found, or indeed if it's photographed, um, then that's a unique number. But additionally, we put plastic colourings on, uh, and these are easily visible because uh, the, the, the metal ring goes on the tarsus, the lower part of the leg. The colouring goes on the tibia, the upper part. That's much more easily visible if they're wading. We have different size rings for different birds. This is what we call a size J. And so that now can swivel. It can move up and down freely. There's no gap in there, so it can't get caught on anything. And that will be with the bird for the rest of its life. Oh, this is the colouring we're going to put on. It's got a unique code. This one is ACV. Put it on the left leg, yeah. Yep. These are quite tricky to put on because they're very stiff because they have to be durable. Draw through, yep. Okay, now we swivel around 90 degrees. I can't see anything at the moment. Okay. Okay. it a bit and then to make sure that it can't, I mean it won't come off, but just to make doubly sure we just glue along the joint of the colouring. So we've, we've visited a nest which is built on a platform in the reeds uh, belonging to a pair of great white egrets. Um, we've uh, calculated the age of the chicks, we've removed the chicks um, sailing up in a kayak from the nest. Uh, we've withdrawn a bit from the nest, we've put metal rings on which has got a unique number and a colour ring which is unique to the bird um, on each bird. We've weighed them, uh, we've taken feather samples for DNA and then we've popped them back in the nest. The, the difficult thing is calculating the timing because you only have a window between uh, the chicks being about 15 and, and 18 or 19 days old. They have to be big enough to take the rings but not so big that they will leave the nest which is what we don't want them to do. They first nested here on the Avalon Marshes in 2012, which was the first time anywhere in the UK, so it's quite an exciting species to be monitoring. Um, and since then, they've gradually built up. So this year, at the moment, we've got 44 active nests, I think, out of 50-something, rather, um, 55 or so. A few uh, failed early stages, which is what you expect. Um, so here on West Hay, uh, we have four nests. Uh, this one, which is a standalone nest, and three others, which is the first time there have been as many as four nests on this reserve. Overall, the breeding success here on the Avalon Marshes has been so significant that these birds are now being sighted all over the country because their colourings make them very visible. So I coordinate the project. A lot of people send me in sightings. We've had birds go to Scotland, to the Isle of Wight, to Wales and to East Anglia. We manage food beds on a habitat level. So we manage them become as diverse as they possibly can. And the same units where we have great whites nesting, we also have marsh, harrier, and bittern. So I think it demonstrates that our reed bed management and 
strategy in these units is working well and being really diverse and favourable to a lot of these bird species. I think the success of the great white eagle breeding population here on the Avalon Marsh is a demonstration of the success of the partnership. With over a couple thousand hectares of land under conservation management, rebeds managed at different successional stages, demonstrates across the landscape scale this really benefits a wide array of species. And I think this approach will only become more successful as time goes on.